get started. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm the assistant curator. My name is Sarah Vogelman. I'm the assistant curator of fine art um, here at the museum. Uh, and I'm also the curator of this exhibition, this year's uh, New Jersey Arts Annual, uh, Reemergence. Um, we're here today for the third uh, artist talk event. Um, and we, you know, this is part of a lunchtime series that we um, have started to do since the beginning of, since this fall. Um, where, you know, we really want to give our public here and also on Instagram or video, wherever you're watching this, an opportunity to engage directly with the artists whose work is, are featured in the exhibition, learn a little bit more about them, their work, and their practice. Um, so today, you know, we're really privileged to have uh, Shin Young on and Sinead Hornack here with us. Um, and, you know, I think we're, you know, I just a few thank yous. Uh, the New Jersey Arts Annual Reemergence is a project of the New Jersey State Council on the Arts and the New Jersey State Museum. Funding for the New Jersey Arts Annual Reemergence has been made possible in part by funds from the New Jersey State Council on the Arts and has received additional support from the New Jersey State Museum Foundation through the Lucille M. Paris Fund. Um, so yeah, today we're really privileged to speak with these two artists. Um, just some brief introductions, and I won't talk about their work much at all, just because that's what they're here to do. Um, Shin Yong An is an award-winning Korean-American artist who paints familiar first-person scenes from daily life over newspaper clippings and headlines of global current events. Shin Yang studied art and earned a BFA at the Fiosung Women's University in Daegu. Daegu. Uh, oh, yeah, am I, yeah, I saying yeah, that correctly, South Korea? Fiosung University, yeah. Fiosung University. It's not in <laughs> <laughs> um, Then eventually went on to study at the Art Students League and the New York Academy of of art where she earned her MFA. Currently, Shen Yang works from her studio in Jersey City and over the last 20 years has received over 30 awards for her painting and participated in a number of solo exhibitions across New York and New Jersey as well as dozens of group exhibitions both nationally and internationally. Um, Shanae Hornack is a New Jersey raised artist who explores abstraction through mixed media work centered around the idea of the body being a vessel and container of the soul. Uh, Sinead just recently received her BFA in, in fiber from uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, and her work has been exhibited throughout galleries and venues in Savannah, Georgia, and Massachusetts, and New York. Um, please join me in welcoming these two artists to our galleries, um, and I will pass the mic over to Shin Yang, and we will take a short walk to the other side of this wall and, and get started with our little walk and talk here. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm Xin Yang. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I want to tell you about my art education history, which will give you a better understanding of me as an artist and some inspiration. I was born in South Korea. I knew I was talented at early age uh, 10, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to be an artist. So I never take art, uh, special art classes until I went to college. I believe it was my destiny to take fine art classes there, although my major was visual design. After graduating from college, I was an art instructor for 10 years. Fortunately, my teaching skills were better than my, teaching, uh, my art ability in those days. But, but um, the more I thought, the more I felt I needed to study figurative art. For, uh, for my own art to express my feelings and ideas with my desire to pursue more knowledge in the field I stopped teaching and moved to New York in 1995 
In 1996, I joined the Art Students League of New York and took hobbies. Uh, uh, I, I tried to learn many different styles of teachers. I met many great artists there, we, uh, including Harvey Dynasty. He was a sincere, realist painter. I didn't realize his fame as a teacher uh, at this school. But I was lucky to meet him nonetheless. My drawing and painting improved rapidly under his instruction. Even though my English was very poor, he understood me well enough, however, through my actions, like other language. <laughs> Several years later, I entered the New York Academy of Art to, uh, for a master's degree in figurative art. I, I believe I could break the bound, uh, traditional boundaries for unlimited creativity by mastering this art form. Without that training, I wouldn't be able to achieve my goals. I stayed at school all day from 9 to 9, taking extra classes besides painting. I took a class of art history, anatomy, drawing, perspective, sculpture, painting, and a copying class at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. During this time, all class teachers were so cons uh, constructive, especially the, my portrait painting influenced primarily by Patrick Corners and uh, copying original paintings at the Met in a copying class by Edward Schumann. Especially helpful was copying Rembrandt pa paintings. When I figured out his techniques by researching his colors and mediums and copying one of his original paintings, I just felt real freedom. Another artist I like is Van Gogh. Every time I saw his paintings at the Met, I simply couldn't believe his work looked so alive. His brush strokes created life. I wanted to create my own by combining the techniques of Rembrandt and Van Gogh. After graduating from New York Academy of Art in 2001, I returned to Art Student League, League to take a uh, Harvey Dynasty's class in the afternoon and uh, Kenneth McIntosh's class in the morning. It was unusual to, for an artist to take instructions in such a different styles of uh, teachers. But I, I needed to create my own by combining the techniques of realistic and impressionist. Ken, Ken was also a good teacher. He, his style of uh, freestyle of teaching and painting contrasted with Harvey's realist style, which is the more, much more do it the way you see. That's the realist style. In the Harvey class, we never uh, try any imagination colors, only, but only gray and gray pink for the background. We had a north light from a uh, natural light from the window. Window. So that's why the figurative artist with a uh, great background is the best for the portrait, the showing those skin colors. I understand. But I needed to try something different from uh, 
by imagination. So I needed uh, to be strong facing harvest harsh critique. Uh, but I was never terribly upset by his critical word for my work. But um, I had to skip his class some days when he was in. Yeah. One day he gave up and asked me to write a great background for at least one painting. I did. I, I, and he asked and finished one painting with a gray but slightly greenish background. He delighted and gave it a red dot which he indicated for the best of the show for that year's class show. I knew I could do what he wanted, but I needed to try something different for my create my own art. In Ken's class, I could try any colors and techniques. That year, I won an Xavier Gonzalez and Edward Grant allowed me to travel across Spain for nine months. I visited many museums and met many Spaniards while I was traveling. I became a member of a circle that San Luc in Barcelona and painted the Spanish models there in 2003. That completed my formal art education. But I still live a life of observation and learning rather than teaching. Because art needs lifelong learning. Hmm. After my nine months trip around Spain, I felt more comfortable at home as time passed. Yet there was always something in my mind that never left through my many experiences. As a figurative artist, I wanted, I desired to emphasize humanity's beauty and importance. I read um, with that book, that those goals. I read uh, newspapers as, as a daily routine and came across some articles about billionaires' philanthropies. Those articles about philanthropy of Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Chuck Finney impressed me. After reading those articles, I had difficulty in sleeping. From then on, I reflected that focusing on portrait painting was not challenging enough, in the sense that I was only improving my talent in pleasing myself. What had I done for the poetry? I believe in nothing. So, I thought deeply about what art is, and that it could be a way to influence other people. So, I searched the additional articles and realized I had been passionate about so many unfortunate and horrible events, as, such as wars, disasters, famine, racism, corruption, etc. Maybe I wasn't indifferent, but I was uninvolved. So I wanted to express my feelings in my work, and I, so I experimented with removing the facial part of my portrait paintings, showing just the hands and feet as a pers the person was unconcerned 
and doing everyday tasks like, like clipping nails. These figures are in front of a garage of, of, of disturbing news stories glued on canvas as a background. Hopefully, it was a novel way to express my feelings and ideas, spreading awareness about some abuses in our current society. Central theme of my hands and feet series explores some of our present world unfortunate realities through uh, through combining ordinary routine tasks with exceptional events. When viewers can uh, see the, my hands and feet series far away, it looks odd because they are unusual objects for figurative paintings. But when you look at it close up, it shows that the backdrop is composed of upsetting stories from the newspapers on a particular subject. Another uh, theme of uh, another of my theme is technology. As a representative in clicking, I want to show. I brought this one for showing the another work, but it, I think it can be uh, time constraints. I'm going to uh, give up <laughs> to show you. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to explain by my over. Clicking, clicking with a mouse and imagining searching on a computer or touching the screen. For many, this is how we learn about the news recently. So I, I'm trying to convey messages through these, these uh, uh, particular words and to, to find the truth using historical articles and the, the realities of current issues to inform the next generation. History, history shows we cannot have a bright future without correct historical recognition and reflection. With this format, I made a device series, including searching. These paintings use the articles about race issues, Black Lives Matter, and solving hate crimes. I painted the mother's hand, searching images with his smartphone on these recent incidents in America. What do you think I'm working toward? To get the viewers involved. Reading and listening to the news can be disturbing. However, I can no longer ignore the effect how outside events have on me. Yet, I love working in oil paint to express my feelings and ideas. So, rather than getting frustrated, in, uh, uh, frustrated by inability to effect significant changes, I channel my emotions into my work using crowd news articles as a background. I hope my pages can make a difference. Thank you. I, we have a five minutes. <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> if you have any questions. Yeah. <laughs> well. I didn't hear the name of the uh, person that you worked with. Uh, the artist or teacher you have at Art Students. I didn't oh, yeah, Harvey Dunstein. Harvey Dunstein and Kenneth McEnroe. Oh, okay. Harvey Dunstein died last June. Oh, yeah, wow. I miss him so much. Yeah. yeah, I have many, many memorable experience, uh, episodes with him, but I. Um, I, I skipped. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for sharing so much about your thank you. history um, yeah. and about how you came to this sort of style of 
mm. of working. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few questions about sort of the some of the formal. Uh -huh. So you said that the, the hands are from a bot, like from yeah, a model. model. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you use the same model every? Yeah, time? same. Yeah, same model. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So, so, yeah. Sometimes, that, yeah, when, when, I, when, I, when I don't have a mother, I'm using my hands. Okay. Yeah, also. And my, my husband's hands all the time. Got it. <laughs> Got it. But we need a, a life. Uh -huh. we, we only a put a picture from the picture, it, it's not, uh, not easy to, uh, de to, for the details. That's so you need someone think. there. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. got it. Um, yeah, no, I think that's really interesting because I, I, yeah, I, they seem like specific. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. So I was wondering if it was always the same or yeah, how. Yeah, if there's meaning behind who you're including right. specifically, or if it's just who you have available mm -hmm. to you. Um, so it makes sense that it's your hands or, or your husband's. Mm -hmm. uh, Or do you stockpile these over time? Yeah. You, you, so you're, you know, you're cutting out the things that are interesting to you, mm -hmm. or you know, me are meaningful to you. Mm -hmm. And then, are you categorizing them? Yeah. How categorizing. are you? Yeah. How are you going about um, bringing these all together? And is there what newspapers are you looking at, or like what? Uh, is there a specific newspaper? Is it like the aesthetic of the kind of newspaper that you're using, or just the headlines, the content? Um, yeah, I'm subscribing the the New York Times mm -hmm. mostly, and I, sometimes I'm reading uh, Korean newspapers. Mm -hmm. And whenever I go to the Manhattan, I have uh, many free free uh, newspapers, and when. Whenever I have a chance to get uh, the, the newspapers, and then so I already cut out the, the, the news articles, um, the specific uh, articles which I impacted, and also some historical news, news articles. And I have many drawers in and, and my mm. home, home studio. Yeah. I have many stores having different articles. And, Collected from the 2006. Since yeah, 2006, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have articles. Yeah. Wow. More articles. And then you know, I have a studio in the Jersey City, and also having many, <laughs> many newspapers. You're an archive, uh, a newspaper archive, basically. Yeah. Some sometimes it's, uh, it's turning yellow, see, but whenever I use a gesso, and it's uh, turning the colors, I make a colors. On the three layers of gesso prevent the, the, the newspapers fading the turn out the yellow sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so those are actual newspapers? Yes, oh, yes, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these are obviously the same the, uh, related themes of sort of race issues. Right, right. As you said, Black Lives Matter, uh -huh. sort of like Asian hate as well. Yeah, so, so in hate crimes. Yeah. Um, you, did you have them categorized yeah. that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and these are fairly recent articles. These are, you know, I think this work and part of why it's chosen for this exhibition uh -huh. is it's very specific to right, right, right. Um, you know yeah. the last two years, mm -hmm. 2020 to 2022. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm wondering if your work is always so relevant to the current state or are you sometimes going back to older art like archived so, articles? Yeah sometimes I go to back mm -hmm. because of the, the pandemic. Yeah. It happened a long time ago, nineteen eighteen. And I have I uh, uh, searched the dead articles and I put it together for the COVID nineteen oh, uh, articles. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Put together. Wow. And then these days with the wars from the Ukraine Ukraine oh. war. I'm collecting the Russian history, Ukraine history. I'm trying to find that, that kind of articles yeah. from any resources. Yeah. Wow. So new, new, new categories obviously come up as, yeah. as mm -hmm. issues arise right. in the world. 
I'm always busy when I, whenever I sleep and whenever I wake up, I have new ideas. Oh, this, this article I should put, um, wow. put, put, put my, uh, my paintings. Yeah. Always that one. Yeah. We the, we the wake up, uh, busy. In dreams, I was always busy thinking always about okay. <laughs> Should I do? What should I do? <laughs> and in terms of the, you know, what the person is doing, mm -hmm. on top of how do you decide what the, what the action is, what the prop is that they're working with? Is there a correspondence yeah, between the background? Yeah, it automatically and came up. Oh, okay. Automatically, so you, whenever I see the articles, automatically you have came a up vision the idea. what it's going yeah. to be. Got it. But they're not always related. It's just, it's kind of like you have a, and just, just have an idea. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. It's kind of, it, I'm gonna do this one for next. I think that something important you win a war with this this one because it's new. Whenever I got a new like device, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, whenever I got a new device, I'm gonna try. Oh, I should the paint, technology paint, yeah. paint this one. Okay, and then I'm, I'm gonna find the, some articles. Oh, that that's a, the interesting idea to show this one. Mm. Yeah, that one. And then it's so disturbing news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanna. From the whole disturbing event. Sewing and the machine allows me to sort of, it's like this bodily involvement. 
and sort of in the way like Pollock um, in this abstract painting, he would like walk in the painting and it's this involvement with this piece and sort of like recording these moments in time and recording his like bodily presence on the machine. Um, so with freehand embroidery, you can do it on the machine, but it's a freehand foot and that foot allows you to completely like whip the fabric around and be totally like involved with it. And so at first like with how I would like use the foot, I'd go really fast and it kind of expresses this anger, this rage. I could slow down and be more delicate on the edges and sort of express like these highs and lows. And that's sort of my way of like recording um, these moments in time. And um, I, I see my hands and my body as like a medium, just sort of expressing this presence within and this exterior. And at times I think we have this frustration with trying to, to understand the two. And I, I feel this disconnect in a way, but it, it, my body is in the medium to sort of express that. Um, so this piece in particular, uh, the process of it will sort of help um, explain my overall process. Um, so the, during my like, uh, undergrad last year, I was doing these daily practices of stitching um, or like um, drawing over faces and I used a lot of collage materials. So I had this magazine and uh, I was shown to this one image, it was a portrait of a woman and the background was, was black, so she naturally sort of emerged from the image and, um, and there was already this natural aura about her before I added sort of the elements to it and so I was doing these kind of practices where I'd be stitching over the faces and it was just sort of like uh, express this idea of, um, you know, our facial features, although they define us, it's, you know, it, it, the body is sort of an aura, it's a vessel, um, so sort of dispersing that in a way. And I, I sort of created this piece and then just sort of put it aside, um, it just sort of like a practice and explorative study. And then a few months later, I was doing these daily practices of um, trying to sort of translate my drawings um, my, my writing, my poetry onto fabric. And so that image I printed on sublimation paper using sublimation dye. And if you use uh, sublimation dye, you're able to heat press onto any fabric that's 100% polyester. Um, so I heat pressed on a poly foil, which is shown here, it's a sheer uh, polyester. And when I was doing it, I had no intention of like an end project. I was sort of just like, um, um, just experimentation. I, I would burn the fabric, there's multiple layers, there's text involved, and the more you heat press, the more heat you use, the more uh, elements start to fade. So there's definitely other layers within that um, that you just sort of lose. But, but they were there and it was part of the process and it was totally experiment, like, you know, uh, big on experimentation. And so I did that, and that was just a separate piece, just sort of a study put aside. And then after I graduated college, a few months later, about this time a year ago, I was doing a residency and I had a studio and um, I was putting up some of my work like, on the walls as sort of inspirations in my studies and the magazine collage that I stitched on that I put on the wall but I, I wasn't crazy about some aspects of it, maybe it didn't travel well, maybe some things I wanted to hide so I just naturally sort of took this fabric and put it on top totally didn't step back, pay attention to placement or anything, it's just like instinctual in the moment. And I didn't think much of it, I didn't see anything from it, but it was through like uh, people coming into my studio and engagement with others that sparked this conversation. And my studio, it was in front of like a big window on a busy street in Savannah. And I'd leave the light on that night and a lot of people would be sort of in that area at night and people would tell me, oh, she comes alive at night, she steps out of there. One guy told me, I hear her, she speaks to me, wow. she's talking to me through the window. And it sort of like sparked this like, you know, idea. It was interesting how sort of, especially because my body's big on, uh, my work is big on like the body and the aura and this like spiritual aspect, like connecting with others can kind of bring that forward. Um, and so then the search kind of make me think about fragments and how I work in fragments, that each piece was a fragment in time. And each piece that I, you know, layer that I did, um, um, I, you know, I was going through a truly different phase in my life. 
um, you know, it's always something different. And, and sort of how it comes together, it blends into one. And I think that relates to sort of the human psyche and the human experience of working through the fragments. And um, my, my work is spiritual in a sense and is personal. And I just personally believe that no one's born completely raw. That when you're born, your soul, whether you've been here multiple times, whether you've been in nature, whether you've been here once, you have your composer fragments, you have a story, you have a passage, you have something, whether it's big, whether it's small, you've had something, and your life is sort of mending these together. And that's sort of what this piece symbolizes, is this mending of the two. But even once you mend these pieces together, you can see the separation, and, and there's this urge to eventually leave. And, um, and then sort of connecting to that, this idea of fragments, uh, the, the title where uh, the dream piece came from, uh, when I was doing that residency across the street, there was this uh, um, used like art supply store, and they would like hold on to everything, little books, photographs, anything. And there was this book that I bought, it was like a fragment of a book, it didn't have a cover, started at like page 80, where the page is missing, um, but it was a religious passage of some sort. And the fragment that I had, there was only three chapters left. It was uh, the call, the dream face, and the answer in that order. And, and the pages just kept falling out, and like the dream face like, just kept coming up. And I had that piece sort of at an angle, and I almost felt like she was looking at me. And it was like, that, you know, that was just going to be that. And it made me think, too, about how I found it interesting how the dream face was in between the two. And sort of that's like the phase that she's in. Um, or whether she's emerging from her body, whether, you know, she's leaving or her, uh, it, but she's sort of contained within the frame. She may step out at night, we don't know. Um, but this idea of this in between, she's been called, she's been summoned, and we don't quite know the answer. And we know that the answer of life is it, beautiful, it is painful, but there's that, that in between. And um, so that's sort of where that came from. And in terms of my process, I consider myself an, an emerging artist. And um, this piece really helped me sort of be confident in that my process is not linear and it's composed of these fragments, and this was totally instinctual in the sense, you know, uh, me meant to be, and meant to come to sort of, sort of the surface. And sort of in my, I've also come to learn that my process is my concepts. Um, and yeah, the only, I guess, thing that is consistent in my work and part of my process is just writing and poetry. Um, and the sort of stream of consciousness that helps me sort of uh, collage my ideas. So I like to close with a poem. Uh, it's by Janice Lee. Uh, it's poem 29. There in the bright spot against the afternoon window when you wake up from a nap, all squinty-eyed and part of you is still. Left in the other place, there in the curtains, is also your soul. There in the sunlight streaming in, Spotlighting the dust moves, there is also your soul. And the dreams left behind of ravaged faces, hauntings of the dead, there in that fall into fall, leaves changing color and summer flowers beginning to deteriorate, there also is your soul. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go too far. Oh, I bet there'll be questions. I have some. I'll open it up if anybody. That was really beautiful and wonderful. Thank you for sharing the poem. Yeah, please get close up there because that is what's so, I find so intriguing, enchanting <laughs> I don't, you know, about your work is sort of that her face is hidden. It makes you want to get, get up closer to the image and there's sort of this holographic effect that almost happens where, yeah, is she emerging? Is she sinking back? Is she in between? the pane of glass and that we, where, where is she in the plane? Um, and so yeah, I think getting up close is, is very good for our Instagram live <laughs> well um, But yeah, I'll open it up to anyone else if they wanna strike first with a question. Yeah.
who are trying to like um, build off of this. Uh, the only I guess challenging part is it's like this happened so naturally, it was so instinctual that I've done other works trying to create that like holographic effect, but this one is definitely more one of one of a kind in the series. But trying to build off that in a, in a bigger way. Thank you. I might have you hold the mic since you're sorry. Um, I was curious if you considered this work or any other work of yours. And actually the same question for Shinyang, actually, but well, I'll ask you first. The if you consider it portraiture, or if you consider this a portrait. Yeah. Even though it's not her face is obscured. Um, yeah. No, I, I think it is a portraiture, and I think it's almost the, the closest way you can get to an actual port, you know, because it's, I mean, the, I at least see the body as sort of this suit and this way of not hiding something, but it's, it's temporary, and that's sort of really expressing that, and, it, you know, it's portraiture in the way that it, it's, you know, it's someone, and your brain wants it to be someone, and, you know, our brains are trained to sort of see the face. Um, yeah, so portraiture in an in a abstract, in a conceptual way. Um, and just to have the, so there's a, this is, this is the image that came from a magazine that you were describing? Got it. So you don't even know who this person is. Um, and so you have the image in the back, and you've stitched over that image. Yeah, I stitched on the original image. Yeah, and then you've done this. Mm -hmm. and yeah, getting up close to it, I invite you all to come up close to it at some point, because um, there is there is writing on on the image, but there's a lot more to the image to this um, sort of script that's over it. Uh, there there are many layers, um, and so is that is that your handwriting? Mm -hmm. That's all yeah. this poetry that you've written, mm -hmm. um, and then. It and like in all my work a big part and sort of hiding text and because I always it, my work is personal but it, it's uh, it, it's also very common and that's about the human experience but it's like I want people to sort of collage their own their own lives and their own spiritual past into it uh, whatever the case may be and sort of you can pick up words and you may think it means something to me else you can, you can collage your own
bright green color and Richard and Young's work has this a slightly different shade of green. Um, and I was curious if that um, the color of the thread was meaningful to you. Um, or why yeah, you chose it. Meaningful and when I was sort of working on that body of work, that was just like a common color that I just use in a lot of bodies of work. Um, and so because it, it's striking, it pops out, and it I, especially with that image, like the, the colors, the, the pinks of the black. Um, so it, it, it was just instinctual, it was just natural. But that was sort of just my, my process of I'm gravitating towards this color, you know, there must be a science, you know, yeah. behind it as to what my soul, like, you know, how that's expressing. Do you think that the pandemic had been, you know, covering your faces? Isolation, you know, really had me sit with my body and think about it in that sense and how my body is a container. But yeah, I mean, I think the mask too, it, you know, it, it hit, you know, your identity in a way. And, you know, like when I first started, it's like you would run into people, but you didn't know it was them right away because of the mask. And over time, your, your brain, you know, could put the two and two together. But yeah, in the beginning, it's like, yeah. Because it wasn't until really during the pandemic I started to sort of stitch over pieces and, and hide that. And I remember I did do one piece where I sort of just stitched over like, you know, like a mask in a way. And then I just decided to just cover their entire face. Interesting. That's how it affects you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just about, it's a little after one o'clock. If anyone has any last last remarks, questions. Um, otherwise, I want to thank our artists so much. Thank you, Shanae. Thank you, Shin Young. Uh, thank all of you who have come out. Uh, thank you, anyone who's watching. Um, and yeah, I hope you uh, have enjoyed this talk. And our, we're taking a little break over the holidays, so. Um, our next talk will be in January, um, and yeah, I hope to see you here <laughs> um, at that time, so wonderful. Thank you.